What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Being Beautifully Honest channel and podcast. If you have not subscribed yet, please do subscribe and go ahead and hit that like button while you are here. It's like walking into the room and hitting the light switch. And this is a very dark situation. Um, I talked about this once before. And this situation with Shanquella Robinson, it's, it's extremely it's extremely traumatic and troubling to me. Um, she was recently laid to rest this past weekend. And there are new reports out right now that are just even more damaging. And I, I, like many people, I have questions because it's just not making sense to me. So it's being reported um, from a report from Radar Online that the police documentation of what happened in the time leading up to her untimely passing is contradicting previous stories. It's being reported that she was still alive when help arrived, and the doctors tried 14 rounds of CPR in the bid to save her. So they're looking more, the authorities are, into her trip. And so according to her death certificate, she passed within 15 minutes of suffering a spinal cord injury on October 29th. So however, a shocking excerpt from a police report, which had not yet been publicly released until now, states a doctor from a local hospital was with Robinson and others in the villa for close to three hours before she was pronounced no longer living. And the update was reported on this by the Charlotte Observer following the revelations from Geraldo Zuniga, an investigative reporter who works in Los Cabos for Metropolomix. And around 2.13 p.m. on October the 29th, the excerpt claimed that medical help was called to Villa Linda 32, a property run by company Cabo Villas. And Radar Online exclusively confirmed that a video allegedly showing Robinson being repeatedly struck by a woman was captured in the same location. The, re- the police report written in Spanish states that Dr. Carolina Beatriz Ornelas Gutierrez of the American Medical Center arrived an hour later to treat Robinson. She, she was told the patient had drunk a lot of alcohol. Robinson apparently had stable vital signs and was dehydrated, and the doctor explained this to the police. Gutierrez suggested they transfer Robinson to the clinic, but her friends requested that she be treated on site, according to the report. So the info from the police said the doctor was there for close to an hour when Robinson began having a seizure. So at this point, the patient's friend named Winter Donovan called 911 to request an ambulance. The report stated, noting Robinson presented with difficulty breathing and a lowered pulse. The report stated that paramedics administered a total of 14 rounds of CPR, five doses of adrenaline, and six discharges of AED shocks without success. Despite their efforts, Gutierrez declared her no longer living at 5.57 p.m. So the FBI is investigating her passing untimely amid these conflicting reports. So as it was previously reported, Robinson's family believes there was foul play after obtaining an autopsy that stated she had a broken neck despite her friends claiming she had alcohol poisoning. And the thing about it is, like I said before, who can just come out and say that someone had alcohol poisoning? That's not even normal. It really is not normal. Like, you're not going to have just drinking a lot of margaritas and have alcohol poisoning unless someone literally, like, poisoned the drinks. We're not talking about people just drinking straight bottles, like bottles and bottles of liquor. It That's not common. It's not that easy to happen. But my question is, after this new information has been revealed, 
just because the friends said that they did not want her to be taken and they wanted her to be treated on site, why would they listen to that? Because if it's about the health of this person and possibly saving a life, should it matter that the person or persons that are with that person says that, no, we don't want her to be taken. We want you to treat her here. If you have other resources and other, uh, you have other duties and obligations in terms of treating someone to see if you could save their life. And there are other resources that you have off-site versus on the site of the villa, why would they just listen to the friends? So to me, that is the question that just does not have a good ans- a good enough answer for me. And I would really love to know what you guys think about this because in my honest opinion, even if the friends said, or so-called friends said that that's what they wanted, I don't believe that they would just do that just because their friend said, no, you can't take her. You need to treat her here. Because then they said that the so-called friend, Winter Donovan, called for an ambulance after the fact. So I don't know who, to me, listen, it sounds like there's some dishonesty on all around. There definitely is dishonesty when it comes to the so-called friends, because as people have been reporting, they've shut down their social media accounts. Nobody really knows where they are at this point. And no one's turning themselves in just for the sake of even though there is no warrant for their arrest at this point in time. But if you aren't guilty of doing anything wrong, why wouldn't you just try your best to try to rectify the situation so that answers can be given and this family can get the answers that they are seeking after having to put their daughter to rest? That just doesn't make sense to me. But the other thing that doesn't make sense to me is the fact that they're saying that they didn't take her to treat her elsewhere because the friend said that they didn't want them to. Who cares? That's not even her next of kin. So would they have any rights to tell them that we don't want you to take her, you have to treat her here. So to me, I'm, I'm just saying that doesn't make sense to me. You guys can let me know your thoughts about that in the comment section because when I read that, to me, that was a huge red flag as well. So to me, it sounds like there is dishonesty on a number of different fronts, not just with the friends. I'm not saying that the friends are not guilty of anything because I do believe that they are. But when it comes to that statement, That sounds like a huge cop-out to me. It really sounds like they didn't do all that they were supposed to do or could have done. So they're trying to blame that as well on the friends and say, oh, well, you know, we would have taken her, but they said not to, so we didn't. That's bull crap. I don't care what country you're in, but I'm going to end it there because I'm really triggered right now. It's just this whole situation has really made me angry and a poor young soul has lost her life for no good reason at all and this family deserves answers they deserve justice and i hope and pray that they get everything that they are seeking and sooner than later so you guys let me know your thoughts about this in the comment section thank you so much for liking this video and subscribing and until the next time this is beth and i'm just being beautifully honest